Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. I saw this story everywhere over the last week. It was reported in multiple media outlets. There was an outbreak of COVID-19 in the US state of Massachusetts, one of the most vaccinated states in America, and about 75% of those affected were fully vaccinated. This story caused a lot of alarm, and I want to delve into the numbers and what this story truly means. Firstly, if we look at the numbers, initially there were about 500 cases reported. There have since been more, but the numbers have held pretty steady in that about 75% of those affected and diagnosed were fully vaccinated. About 80% of them had symptoms, and thankfully only a handful were hospitalized. The last numbers I saw were about five hospitalizations, four of whom were fully vaccinated. So what do these numbers really mean? Well, the wrong conclusion to draw right away is that COVID-19 vaccines do not work. And that is because the data so far is showing us that COVID-19 vaccines are helping to prevent more severe infections. If you have been vaccinated and then you get COVID-19, you're more likely to have a mild case. That's what the data is showing us so far. And that is what appears to have been borne out in the data from Massachusetts. I was, however, going over the numbers and thinking about whether any other factors could have been involved and made this a unique outbreak. And I did think of a few here. Number one is with Massachusetts being one of the most vaccinated states in America, I think only Vermont is now ahead. About 70% of people in Massachusetts have received one dose of the vaccine. I believe about 65% have been fully vaccinated. Of course, if you get any outbreak in a state with a high vaccination rate, the numbers will be skewed towards a higher percentage of them being vaccinated. That's the first thing to say. And number two is this is a tourist destination of Massachusetts that we're talking about. A lot of people came from out of state. A lot of the transmission may have been people in close quarters outdoors. And what we know is that when people are outdoors, there's nice weather, you're more likely to get a lower viral load than if you are indoors. The other factor playing into this is that the outbreak, the statistics I saw, appeared to have occurred in a younger cohort of people. The average age was in the early 40s. So those are the numbers that I thought of which were making this a bit of a unique outbreak in terms of the specifics involved. If you can think of any others, let me know down below in the comments because it's an interesting thing to debate. And this follows on to two issues that I wanted to discuss here that I've actually been talking about for a few months now. The first is that I believe that the messaging from many medical authorities, many leadership authorities may have been a bit flawed in that many people out there, I'm sure if you did a poll, think that if you get the COVID-19 vaccine, that you have zero chance of getting COVID-19 afterwards. And of course now, when a lot of people see these stories, they're going to be scratching their head. What would have been better is to have been clearer about the fact that COVID-19 vaccines are not 100% affected by any means. You will have breakthrough cases, but you're more likely to have a mild case than a severe case. And this leads on to point number two, which is that the virus which causes COVID-19 is an unstable virus. In that way, it is similar to the influenza virus. So obviously, they're different viruses. And when I first stated this, right, I think I actually wrote about it in November, December, a lot of people looked at me like I had three heads. But actually, this shouldn't be a surprise because we know that viruses which quickly mutate, you get new variants. Of course, they will be more likely to evade vaccines. This is not like a vaccine against a stable pathogen like measles, mumps, or even smallpox in that you give the vaccine and then there's zero chance of you getting the illness afterwards. COVID-19 vaccines are very different in that regard. I am a somewhat different physician than many other sources you may be hearing from in that I view COVID-19 from a global perspective. When it comes to COVID-19, what happens in one part of the world quickly reaches another part of the world. Within weeks, we've been seeing this pattern over the last 18 months, and we cannot ignore what's happening in other parts of the world and vaccines should be getting to where they can help the most people quickest. And there are hundreds of millions of elderly, vulnerable people who may well lose their lives because of this, because we don't have an equal supply of vaccines all over the world. 
I have traveled to much of the rest of the world and I have seen how poor many countries are and those of us in rich western countries are fairly insulated and some of the minutia that we argue over and fight over every day much of the rest of the world would really laugh at they would do anything to be in our position what's the statistic out there something like a couple of billion people in the world live on less than two dollars a day half of the world live on less than five dollars a day we are truly blessed in western countries and we don't have to deal with a lot of what the rest of the world has to deal with every day and sadly a handful of rich western countries right now are hoarding covid19 vaccines and this is not a good situation to be in because those vulnerable groups are the ones that we need to keep razor sharp focus on and as I said in last week's video September to December 2021 is something we have to stay highly focused on in particular in the fall autumn the winter that's when in the northern hemisphere more vulnerable people will be indoors and more prone to picking up a case of COVID-19 and it doesn't take a logical jump here to think that if younger people are getting cases of COVID-19 despite being vaccinated that that may then occur in more vulnerable people who are the vulnerable groups? Well, as I've mentioned as well in previous videos, number one, undoubtedly the elderly. With each passing year of adulthood, our immune system weakens. Number two is anyone with comorbidities, especially any condition which could make them immunosuppress. Lung disease and diabetes is another very large risk factor as well. The third group that I would really like to focus on, and this is especially pertinent to my specialty of lifestyle medicine, is anyone who is overweight or obese. We have seen this pattern again and again. I wish the medical community had stressed it more, but excess body fat has been scientifically shown to be a very large immune suppressant and places an unnatural stress on the lungs during a time of need. And I'm going to be very blunt here. The number of times I've seen families affected by COVID-19, and it is the larger one, who ends up with a severe case and hospitalized is nobody's business. I see it all the time. We have to, as a society, stay focused on these vulnerable groups. Any medical decision out there, whether it's a therapeutic or in this case, a vaccination, is simply a benefit versus risk decision. And if you belong to any of those vulnerable groups, that tips the scale so far in favor of getting yourself protected. And that is why I am really unhappy that all over the world, we have so many people in the these vulnerable groups who have still not been offered the chance to have the vaccine yet and give themselves a degree of protection. So back to my main point then, the COVID-19 cluster of cases that we've seen in Massachusetts, the majority of them vaccinated. I do anticipate there will be more stories like this over the upcoming weeks and months. We have to look at the data, we have to analyze it scientifically, which is what medicine and science is all about. Thanks everyone for listening, Dr. Sunil Dand, MedStoic Lifestyle Medicine. We will speak again next time.